So this is Simpro Manager. This is for the SimMagic ecosystem of wheelbases. Uh, I'm going to show you how I set up my Simpro. Uh, these are the settings that control the wheelbase. Um, obviously, in a simulator, you have two kinds of settings. You have the one, the ones in game, and you have the ones in the simulator. So in general, in game, I like to leave everything off. Basically, I don't touch anything. I try not to add anything in the game i try to do it all from here and that works out pretty well for me i will but in general these are the settings that i use i'm going to explain why i use them i use the sim magic alpha mini so i'm maxed out at the moment i am looking to get an alpha ultimate soon or an alpha or, or something else i don't know i'm really looking on the market at the moment i just know i need more power but yeah so force feedback you set this power this is sorry before we get into it it's worth saying this is all subjective. This is not the fastest way. This is not the best way. Um, it's literally by feel. Like this, um, these are my settings for my feel. So it's like, you know, a f sort of feeling thing is really, uh, it's subjective. And by subjective, I mean it depends on the person that is uh, using it. But we'll jump in. So I'm gonna do this boring stuff first. I just used 900 and then I set 900 in the simulator. Uh, when you organize, uh, when you set your wheel, you, it asks you to turn all the way left, all the way right, and it measures that and goes 450 plus 450 is 900. So I set that. Center, by the way, we just skip this. Point that straight, click, bang. You know, that's what you want to do. Do take your time doing it, though. It is it is easy not to, uh, to do wrong. So you may be coming down the straight and realizing, why is my car pulling to the left, you know? So unless you own an old BMW, that may be... That may be what's happening. So make sure you do take your time to center it. Center it to your monitor, you know, etc. Make sure your rig is straight. Make sure it's not bent. That can happen. Hard lock angle. That's just, uh, you can play with this yourself. Soft, normal, firm. I never really reach the hard lock, so I don't really mess around with it. But I just set soft. I don't really need a hard lock on it. If you are racing with a car that all it has is like this and this, maybe a hard lock is nice then. But bah, I just leave this on soft. So now for the settings, there's not a lot compared to other softwares, but there are, there's enough to get the job done. Um, you do have your presets, by the way, so you can jump in here. And when you do set it nice, you can save it. And I've saved one called iRacing June. You can probably tell I do change this a lot. So, you know, I tweak little things here and I'll explain to you kind of what, what I have, why I have, and then why it's evolved. So... Force feedback set to 100%. Obviously, if you have a very powerful wheel and you find it's too strong, maybe do 60. That way you have all the headroom, you know? You're not losing out on anything, but do set this. Control this to where you want it. Um, max torque as well. You want to set that to where it's appropriate for yourself. This is by feel, by strength, what you can physically handle and what you can physically handle over a semi-prolonged amount of time. Smoothness is important. I raced with smoothness on zero for quite a long time and while it was nice and jagged and rough and uh, very sharp and you can tell all these settings are to make it quite a sharp wheel um i was noticing a lot of heat in the base and i looked at a post on facebook and some guy said uh yo you run smoothness on zero are you trying to melt your base and i was like it's just the way he said it. I was like, okay, I'll try one. Go on. Okay. And it felt super dull compared to zero. But then I got used to it and now it feels absolutely fine. If you want, you can run this on two. But for eye racing, I wouldn't be going. I wouldn't be going this high. But again, the key word being I. These are completely subjective. These are my settings. But smoothness one is what I use for a nice sharp feel. Nice and reactive. When it oversteers, it lets me know straight away. Wheel rotation speed. This is kind of how fast the wheel reacts to stuff. So you, again, test this out yourself. You put this at 100, go over a curb, the wheel is gonna be jumping in your hands. Put this down at zero, you're not gonna feel anything. You will feel the weight of the wheel, the tires, the, the, the communication is trying to tell you, but you won't feel any fast movements. It'll all be pretty slow. So I kind of play between 100 and 90. Uh, I did put this on 45 for a while, but I just found myself working up and up and up and up and up until I basically hit 100 and I was pretty cool with it. So I choose 90. You can choose all sorts of different things. Dan Suzuki in a video I seen, he chose 45. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can operate this, but 90, I like it because I like it sharp. Feedback detail. 
Uh, again, you can test this yourself. When you're going around a corner, you'll feel a lot more weight in the tires. It'll show off the vehicle suspension. You will feel the car's weight on the left. You know, it, there's a lot of feeling stuff going on. Some people say, put this all the way up. You know, you're mad. You're very boring if you don't have it high. But if you have it down at zero, it's very sharp and you get a raw, you get raw data through your wheel. So I kind of put it on one or two because I find it helps for consistency. The raw data, although it sounds good and that you may be super fast with it, in my case, I wasn't because it was too raw for me. I needed something to kind of just soften out the, the big the big moves when they happen because when it's raw, you know, when a big move happens, unless you're able to correct it in a perfect and raw way, you're not going to you're not going to get it all the time. So I put this on two just to kind of add a bit of softness to it. So I talk about sharp and softness, it's very tough to talk about, but that's that's what I'm that's where, that's where we're going. Mechanical damper. These guys, I didn't believe in these. I thought these were silly and not shouldn't be used because raw, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then I, I found out that having a little bit of damping can help with a lot of the sharp spikes that come along with high force feedback. Mechanical friction helped with kind of the looseness that I felt in the wheel. So damper is basically like adding a weight to your wheel. So when you turn left, you know, it stays there. It's weighted. Whereas if you don't have a damper, it'll it'll go wherever you point it, kind of. Um, there's probably better ways to explain all this, but, you know, I'm just explaining it the way I understand it. Mechanical friction will give you, like, the sensation of the, the tires. It'll, it'll give you the feeling of the rubber kind of gliding across the track as you scrape it. Um, I set this to five, again, because I was just looking for a bit more consistency. Trying to dial out some of that raw... Uh, sharp force feedback signals and just trying to dull it out but as you can see I'm very low on this I this used to be 1 to 10 slider so technically this is 1 in my books uh, if this is out of 10 this is setting number 1 having it on 2 so I'm 1 out of 10 on feedback detail 5% on the damper 5% on mechanical friction and mechanical inertia is my most recent uh, venture which is here to stay Mechanical inertia is like when you turn the wheel, um, it's like all the all the bits in the car keep going. So if I throw the wheel right, it's like the car just, it kind of overshoots it a little bit. So let's say I do a full 90 degree right hand turn, but this is what I do with my hands, but what the car does is kind of this. Overshoots it just a little bit and then brings it back. This sounds like it could be messy, it's not. It's really, really useful, and it makes for a very smooth drive. So when you come through, let's say, the chicane on Daytona, and you're there, left, right, straight, you know, if you don't hit it perfectly, you're dead. With mechanical inertia, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, you know? You turn right, it kind of stays right. There's no panic to, you know, flick it left and stuff. So the car has a lot more, it helps the car balance uh, a lot better, all the, all the bits inside the car. So I'm a big fan of mechanical inertia. Again, try these out one by one. It'll take you a long time to get it to where you want it, but this is my starting point. Feedback frequency. This is an interesting one. This is like uh, interpolation. Um, I hate it, personally. Some people use it. I don't like it. Um, I don't like it at all. It makes the wheel too smooth. I don't get as much violent bumps and I don't get that sharpness and I mean really sharpness that I'm looking for so even having this on one for me it just doesn't cut it it makes the wheel feel probably a lot like a more a real car you know you can just feel it's force feedback in a car but with this wheelbase I'm trying to feel everything that's going on in the car I'm trying to get g-forces I'm trying to get you know slip I'm trying to get I'm trying to sense everything and if I have this on it just makes it too soft now if you have all these settings and you notice that, oh, it's too sharp for me, click this up one. This will just smooth all the frequency stuff out and it'll make it a lot more uh, palatable, let's say. Easier to swallow. But for me personally, I leave this on zero. That's, uh, that's that in a nutshell. You do have other effects. I leave all these on 100. I messed around with them. I couldn't get them back to 100. Uh, let me see. Do, do, do. I'll just leave it like that. The only thing I did change was, I'm not sure if this was default, I turned this off, mechanical spring, you don't want that. But center damper is quite interesting. These come default off, actually. I set this to like 10%. And what this does is, this helps to get rid of oscillations. When you're coming down a main straight and you let go of the wheel, your wheel's going to be like flying around and going do 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 If you set that 
to 10%, when the wheel is pointing straight, it'll kind of just lessen the force feedback. And I haven't noticed any impact on my driving or my performance, but I have noticed just a much more comfortable ride. You know, I can take one hand off the wheel and I don't have to death grip it because I know it's about to start oscillating on me. So I leave that at 10%. Again, that's a tip I learned from Dan Suzuki. In his video, he actually had on eight. Uh, he said he experimented between 12 and eight or, or something like that. I just chose 10 because the round number looks nice. And I did try eight, but I don't know. I just settled on 10, just a little bit more. You can try this out for yourself. These guys, I leave all here. You can play with them. If you reduce these, you will get a very raw feel. So I would leave these as is, let the game do its thing. This is just gonna accept the game's uh, output. And then it'll filter it through this, and then it'll filter it through your base. So, again, I'm no master at all this stuff, but these are my settings after owning the Sim Magic for almost two years now, and I'm really happy with them. You know, I'm only making little tweaks now. You know, I maybe put this up to a hundred. I don't really put it down anymore, but I could understand someone who may want to have this at sixty or fifty. Like having the wheel rotation speed of fifty or sixty is more than acceptable. So. If you have it at 60 and you like it and you feel 90 is a bit too rough, you know, when you hit curbs and stuff, absolutely, leave it there. If you like 40, 50, 60, you know, wheel rotation speed makes a big difference. Feedback detail, that's going to be down to you, but I feel too is that it's nice, you know, you get all the detail, it's still nice and raw, but you get to benefit from some of that kind of suspension feel too, so. That, I believe, is everything. In the sim, there's not much to set. It's basically, you can set your force feedback intensity. I set that to 60%. Uh, that just means when you press the auto button, it'll use 60% of what's available uh, for, the, for the sim. Or from the wheelbase, excuse me. But um, yeah, no, I don't use any other settings in game. Uh, these are my sim magic settings, guys. Hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below and I will try my best to answer them. So yeah, hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.